Greetings fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to another Blood Splattered Vlog. So this last weekend for my birthday, I ended up doing this giant J-horror binge, watching a whole bunch of movies from the last five years that came out of Japan that I completely missed. And I realized after watching all of them, hey, why not do a series of vlogs on them like I did for Shin Godzilla or As the Gods Will? I mean, why not? You could all hear my thoughts, and maybe I can recommend a really awesome movie to you. And the first movie I want to talk about is Takashi Miike's The Lesson of Evil from 2012. And right off the bat, I want to say that I really fucking love this movie, though I want to give a few warnings about it first. This movie is extremely intricate, so you have to pay really close attention to it the whole way through. And it can get a little hard to watch because not only is it extremely intricate, it's also very long and kind of overstays its welcome just a little bit. But trust me when I say, if you stick through the slow burn, by the time you get to the finale, holy shit, everything pays off. What this movie culminates into is a finale that is probably one of the most fucked up I've seen since Itchy the Killer. To reference another Takashi Miike film, of course. So stick with it. Stick with it and keep paying attention. And it will be very easy when you're watching the movie to get a little lost because there's so many characters involved with this story and it's easy to mix them up. Because essentially this movie is about a series of murders that start happening around this one Japanese high school and they're trying to figure out who's doing it and why. But because it's a Japanese high school, they're all wearing the same uniform, so it's very easy to mix some of the kids up. You probably won't have the same problem with the teachers that you will with the students, but you definitely might say like, oh shit, was that that girl or that girl? Oh, oh, it was that girl. Okay. But at least with my first watching of the movie, I know I had moments like that, which to be fair, I had moments like that for Battle Royale as well. And as many of you know, Battle Royale is one of my favorite films of all time, so that is not a knock on this movie at all. It is merely a warning from me to you to keep on going with the movie and keep on trying to catch up, because trust me, it is totally worth it. But yeah, how to describe this movie. Wikipedia lists it as a slasher, which is not entirely accurate, though I can see how you might interpret the finale as that. What I found this movie to be more so is more of a mixture of a cat and mouse game as well as an exploration on insanity and sociopathy. But even so, this movie is still more coherent than most Takashi Miike films and a little more straightforward despite everything I just said. Because there's really only one scene where you're sitting there trying to figure out what's real and what's a dream. And the movie eventually makes it very clear what's real and what's a dream, which also sets it apart from some other Takashi Miike films. But yeah, man, this movie is a total 10 out of 10 for me. This is a fantastic horror movie from start to finish, even though it takes a while to get to the horror. So it's kind of like Audition in that way. The entire movie is a build-up to an amazing finale. One that will outright horrify you, one that will make you laugh at some pretty fucked up shit, and one that will make you cry a couple times. Because at least for me, there was a couple students within the school that you really grow to care about. They do not deserve the fate that ends up a them, and neither do most of their friends. But even with that, when the killer starts to strike upon them, you will find yourself grinning like a madman when it happens, because it'll just be so fucked up and so hilarious at times. In a way, this movie kind of allows you to explore your own dark side a little bit. Which I guess makes the title make even more sense, The Lesson of the Evil, You Are the Students. This is up there with Takashi Miike's best horror films, this is up there with Itchy the Killer, with Audition, and even Visitor Q. It's fucked up, it's really engaging, it's a little slow, but trust me, it's totally worth it. And with all that said, my fellow Gorehounds, let us move on to the spoilers. Alrighty, so this movie opens up with this caretaker and this mom talking about her son and how he has gone crazy and he's a danger to society. And while they're talking, we slowly see this 14-year-old boy with a knife slowly coming down this hallway towards them. And the movie cuts right before he strikes, but you kind of get the impression that, oh shit, he just killed his mom and his caretaker, just flat out. We then flash forward to this Japanese high school in which all these teachers are having this giant meeting on how to deal with students cheating on tests. Because it turns out there's a whole cheating ring within the school where students students have figured out this way of cheating by taking their cell phones and putting it under the desk and typing on it without actually looking at it. So basically they're sending all the answers to their friends via text messages. And so the teachers are meeting to try to figure out the best way to handle this because they can't frisk the students to take all their cell phones away because that's a violation of their rights. But they can take the cell phones away at the beginning of class and then give them back at the end of class. But the problem with that is that some of the students have figured this out and carry two cell phones. So this one teacher, otherwise known as the English teacher, and who is 
essentially our main character suggests that, hey, maybe we should jam the cell phones. To which the school responds like, wait, we can't do that. That's actually illegal. That's against radio laws. To which the teacher responds with, well, yeah, if we get caught, but if we only do it during test time and we only do it at the school and we don't do it beyond that, then we should be okay. And the school says, no, we're not going to do that. We're just going to confiscate their phones. And then the meeting ends. And I just realized if I described every scene in this movie that way, we would be here all day. So I'm going to have to vague a little bit the rest of the movie because this is a really complicated film. Basically, you have these multiple storylines going on at once. You have these students that are trying to cheat on these tests. You have these teachers that are sleeping with some of their students. You have this one teacher who's very suspicious of the English teacher because they do the tests and all the cell phones are suspiciously jammed when it happens. Despite the school basically saying, no, we're not going to do that. So the teacher's like, hmm, I think that English teacher might have done it despite us saying no. And so we follow the English teacher for a while and it becomes very clear that he's essentially our main character. And at first we don't know what to think about him because he comes across as extremely charming and friendly and he does a lot of things that could be categorized as good. He stops a gym teacher that's blackmailing one of the students to sleep with him. And hell, even jamming the cell phones to stop the kids from cheating seems like it's coming from a good place even though it's illegal. But then things start to go a little weird and his intentions start to become blurrier. Because the student he successfully saves from being blackmailed by the gym teacher ends up thanking him by kissing him and they start an affair with one another. Which I guess is only marginally better than what the gym teacher was doing, because the gym teacher was blackmailing her while this is consensual, but it's still extremely fucked up and illegal. So you're like, okay, maybe he's not a good guy after all, maybe he's kind of in the middle somewhere. But then it becomes clear that, um, no, he's not in the middle somewhere. He is the psycho killer from the beginning of the movie. He's a complete psychotic sociopath who has this very elaborate plan to essentially stage all these suicides. With the idea being he's going to kill some of the students and some of the teachers, but he's going to make it look like they committed suicide when doing it. And while he's doing this, he's playing this cat and mouse game with some of the students and some of the teachers. Because you have the one teacher that starts to figure out that, oh, he jammed the cell phones even though the school said no, so I'm going to look into this guy and see what his intentions might be. And he's the one who ends up uncovering his past that he killed his parents and shit. But he also uncovers that at a previous school that this guy taught at, there was a series of suicides that were just mysterious. And as students start to go missing at this school, he starts to speculate, oh, this teacher might be the one doing this. Because he was at both schools, and there was mysterious disappearances and mysterious suicides. Maybe this English teacher is the common thread. Which, by the way, I just want to say that the uh, teacher that is the center of the lesson of evil teaches English, which can only make me conclude that the English language is evil as all fuck. But geez, I haven't even scratched the surface of some of the shit that happens in this movie. Like, there is another teacher having an affair with one of the male students. They're having a gay relationship with one another. And the English teacher finds out about it, but he doesn't, like, put a kibosh on it like he did with the one student that was being blackmailed. He instead uses it as blackmail over the teacher that's having the affair by getting him to allow him to use that teacher's place for his affair. That way, he is not caught taking a student back to his place. And then when it starts to become clear that some of the students start to catch on to what the teacher is doing, he ends ends up pulling this elaborate plan. He gets the girl he's having an affair with to give him access to this very encrypted message board that all the students have been using to cheat and shit. And once he has access on that board, he ends up pinning one of the murders that he did on one of the students, which causes a huge fight at the school because one of the murders was actually one of the parents of one of the other students. And then he pretends to be like the nice guy and offers to take the student that got beat up out for drinks, but he kills him and makes it look like that he disappeared, which ultimately makes that student look guilty of the crime that people accused him of on the message board. Well, people didn't. The teacher did, but he disguised himself as one of the students. So yeah, while he's playing this huge cat and mouse game with all the students where he's just manipulating all of them and killing them one by one, as well as the teachers, when it cuts back to him at his place when he's all alone, it gets really interesting. And these are the scenes where things get the most Mike. Because despite him being an English teacher, he's constantly seen listening to German music, and he's constantly looking at these two ravens outside his window, and he's constantly quoting Norse mythology. And for those of you who don't know, in Norse mythology, Odin has two ravens. They represent things like knowledge and memory. And it's very clear that this killer sees these two ravens as constantly judging him. And he even sets up a bird trap in order to get one of them killed. And I believe it's specifically the Raven of Memory that he ends up killing. And he does this after he has this night-long hallucination of essentially his past. And at some point in the past, he ended up going to America in order to study law. And he ended up meeting this guy. I think his name was like Clay or Dave or something. But it's very obvious who this guy is supposed to represent. He's essentially like Dahmer. 
And the two of them become partners in crime and end up committing all these murders within America. But he ultimately ends up killing his partner because his partner kills for the fun of it where he does not. But that's not entirely true because he does kill for the fun of it. But when he does it, he ends up hallucinating his old partner being there with him. And sometimes these hallucinations get very Cronenberg. Like at one point he has this shotgun that he ends up hallucinating his partner's eye on the barrel. And his partner speaks in English and talks kind of like a cowboy. So it's always like, hey partner, we gonna get on going? We gonna kill all these kids? And these are some of my favorite scenes in the whole movie. These scenes are fucking glorious when they happen. And it's very much these scenes that end up cluing you in to just how crazy this guy really is. He's not just a sociopath, he's psychotic. So yeah, the whole thing ends up culminating into this one night when all the students are staying in at the school to create this giant haunted labyrinth inside. And I actually like that conceit because this allowed for when the bloodbath happens at the school in the finale for them to be flashing all these really colorful lights the whole time. And it allowed there to be more interesting backdrops than just like school walls and shit. Because basically when he's killing these students, it's like he's walking through this funhouse when it's happening. So yeah, it becomes clear that the girl he's having the affair with starts to catch on to what he's doing. So he ends up staging her suicide by writing a suicide note for her and having her meet him up at the roof of the school and then throwing her off the side. But before he's finished, one of the other students who saw them go up there ends up following them up there and he ends up being caught. So he kills the student that catches them, but that leaves him with an extra body and now his plan's completely messed up. And I think this is the point in the movie where I'm gonna stop with the spoilers because this leads into the finale of the movie and and it is a fucking horrifying bloodbath. And as an American viewer, it's hard not to see shades of Columbine when this whole sequence is happening. And as per usual, my fellow gorehounds, like, comment, subscribe, and be sure to ring that notification bell so you can get notified of my videos when they're immediately uploaded. And as I always say, my fellow gorehounds, peace out, and I'll catch y'all later.